Hi everyone, the Farmista here. I'll try to get a good camera angle. We'll call that good. Okay, so I feel like I'm jumping the gun a bit because I haven't done an introduction video yet and also I am recording this on my cell phone so please bear with the shaky camera. Um, today I'm going to be making um, a new recipe I've never tried before. I found it on Pinterest. It's from the blog tableforto.com, so shout out to that blogger. Um, it's a beef and broccoli recipe, but I'm actually going to be using venison because that's what I have, and I prefer to use uh, meat that I know where it's come from. Um, so I will get you all set up here, and we will have you so you can see that, oh, this is a crock pot recipe, so I'll have it so you can see the crock pot here. All right, one second, I'll be right. So, I've already gathered most of the ingredients and I'm actually going to be reading this off of my laptop, which is over here. Um, so we will see. Okay, so um, another thing is this uh, recipe suggested having, um, let's see. So for this recipe, I think the author intended for you to have meat that was already thawed, but mine is frozen. So we're just going to put it in frozen because that's what I usually do when I cook in the crock pot anyway. So we're going to leave this off for now, but it is plugged in. Alright, instructions. Oh, I might as well read the ingredients for, for you of the original recipe, but I am... Like I said, going to be doing things a little bit differently. I'm just using this recipe as a base. So I'm going to be leaving some things out and adding some other things. One pound boneless beef chuck roast sliced into thin strips. Uh, one cup beef consomme or beef broth. Half cup low sodium soy sauce. One third cup dark brown sugar. One tablespoon sesame oil. Three garlic cloves minced. 2 tablespoons cornstarch and 4 tablespoons sauce. Um, what it means by the sauce is it's going to have you take 4 tablespoons out of the crock pot once you've finished cooking. Um, and then you're going to be mixing that with the cornstarch to thicken the entirety of the sauce. So, and then the other things are frozen broccoli florets, as many as desired, and the blogger says that she believes she used almost 2 cups. Um, and also cooked white rice and it doesn't say how much you use but generally for beef and broccoli you just you can just kind of fill up your plate or bowl with rice and then you pour this over the top so instruction numero uno is in the insert of the crock pot which is this part so you'll see that that comes out like that uh, whisk together the beef consomme soy sauce dark brown sugar sesame oil and garlic measuring cup. Can you see that pretty good? Okay, so it's a two cup and I need one cup of the beef consomme or beef broth. I do have it, I swear. Oh, it's right there. I put it right in front of my face. Okay, so I'm just going with the El Cheapo. Oh, I shouldn't really see that. I guess I could get in trouble. Um, I remember that this is backwards of me. Okay, so um, beef broth from Walmart. Since this is a liquid, you know what? I'm gonna move this lid out of my way so I have more room. There we go. Okay, so not really see what I'm doing here. Since this is a liquid. not going to open the can all the way because there's really no point. So as you can see, I've just punctured the top here and then I'm going to pour one cup. Oh, you know what else? Here's a pro tip is that you need to puncture both sides to let in airflow.
keeping it low so that it's not splashing all over my kitchen. Got that. Now we need a half cup low sodium soy sauce. So this I bought from Aldi and it is Fusia brand, I guess. Um, I don't think that really matters. I think you just need low sodium soy sauce. Obviously you could do it without the low sodium. Um, next is one third cup brown sugar. So anyway, uh, it also says use dark brown sugar, but I have always used a light brown sugar. Um, okay, so as some of you may know, but maybe not everyone, when you have brown sugar, you always pack it with cooking and baking. So we're going to go ahead and add that. Um, my suggestion would be probably add the brown sugar first and then pour the liquid on top of it so you don't have a big splash. I didn't think of that because, you know, I wasn't reading ahead. Okay, so the next on the list is one tablespoon sesame oil. And, um, you know, I just, I don't have that on hand. And I did not buy it when I was out and about today, so we're not going to be doing that. Uh, so we're going to skip to, it says three garlic clove minced. So I don't have fresh garlic anymore, I just ran out. Um, but this is what I always grew up using because we never had fresh garlic. I guess we don't, didn't use it often enough. This is just minced garlic. This is again from Aldi, um, in a jar and it has to be refrigerated once it's open. As you can see, I don't have a lot left, but it is very potent. Um, I guess because it's been sitting there stewing. I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of this jar off. Um, I'm going to use the same spoon I used in the brown sugar because like I said, I'm finishing it off. Um, anyway, so we're going to whisk this up. So I have Worcestershire sauce in here in my cupboard because uh, I made some pretty good Chex Mix today for the first time, uh, which I'll probably do a video on that as well once I kind of perfect my personal recipe for it. Um, so I have Worcestershire sauce and I'm, I just recently moved and so my stuff is everywhere and somehow I think I managed to leave behind my tablespoon, which is really sad. So I have a half tablespoon here, and I'm going to put in four of these, um, which will be the equivalent of two tablespoons, so half of the called for sesame seed oil. Like I said, I have never tried this before, so I will definitely have to get back to you. I also smell everything when I'm cooking. Um, most of the time what I do is I, I don't so much cook with recipes as just go by taste. So at some point I will probably also post a video of, um, of when I do a venison roast, which obviously, like I said, I use venison most of the time instead of, um, instead of beef, just because that's what I have on hand right now. Uh, once I go home for Thanksgiving, I will be able to pick up some of my grandpa's grass-fed beef, and so then, obviously, uh, I will have some of that and not just the venison, and so maybe you'll be a little more comfortable with my beef recipes. So, anyway. So that smells pretty oriental to me. Um, one thing I'm going to do is add just a dash of ginger because uh, whenever I make stir fry, my stir fry sauce, which I guess I can, so as you can see it's just a light sprinkle in there. And then I'm going to whisk that up as well. When I make stir fry I always add ginger. Um, so I'm going to add it to this as well. Okay, so I have venison from 2015. So hunting season in Wisconsin is uh, right around Thanksgiving. It's the weekend before and then the weekend after. So it's, it's a seven-day season. Um, anyway, this is frozen, but I'm just going to gently... Try not to make a splash here. 
put that in there. Um, so I tried a new packaging technique this year and as you can see it's not ideal because um, there is some condensation in there that froze and there's no ice in there. Um, that is not freezer burn. So it's not necessarily a problem. That's just the moisture that froze. It's not freezer burn. Nonetheless, I um, gen generally I think I would double bag instead of just single bagging with a freezer bag. But like I said, I was trying something different. So um, I'm going to cook it in four hours instead of six, as I said. And this bag, I have this great value frozen broccoli florets and it's actually less than two cups it's only 14 ounces um but if i decide it's not enough i do have a uh, fresh broccoli in the refrigerator that i can cook a little bit faster than this so i would probably kind of saute that in a pan with some butter if i decide that we need more broccoli although i think that really we're more interested in the venison so i'm going to pop that in there right along with the meat um, just to make sure that it gets really tender. And I'm not the Incredible Hulk here, guys. Um, it's been sitting out for maybe 20 minutes while I've been, also while I've been doing this video. Um, so I'm not just massively breaking broccoli that's frozen. It's actually kind of slushy. I hope that guy doesn't gross you guys out. But anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and get the moisture out of the bag as well. Make sure all the little pieces are out of there. Okay, and like I said, I already turned that on. Set it to four hours on high. And... I'm gonna um, kind of push those down a little bit. So I'm gonna be coming back in maybe an hour and I'll kind of stir things around a bit because it is stew meat so it will be like little chunks kind of like that. Um, but obviously it's all frozen together and I don't want that. I want it to all get in the juice. So in about an hour I'll be coming back and stirring that to break it up a bit. Ideally, you guys, just use the fresh stuff. I think you can even get um, beef roast in little strips or for sure pork loin um, pieces at um, a butcher shop or a marketplace or Walmart if you wish. Um, you know, maybe even Aldi. Although I, I don't generally buy meat from... I don't usually buy meat. Um because I, I get it from my grandpa and my dad, and then I also go hunting myself. So I'm really lucky, you guys. I really don't buy meat, other than um, I will buy chicken um, and and bacon sometimes. But otherwise, I, I don't buy red meat. So anyway, um, yeah, if you are comfortable buying meat from any of those places, go for it, and I'm sure you can find pretty much the exact cut size that you would need um so then you know you just lay it out in the bottom and so it's all sitting in the juice that would be the best but i'm just throwing this together so i can come back in about four hours like 9 30 9 o'clock something like that um, when my boyfriend comes over after work and so we'll be able to have dinner together so that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoy and I will be sure to get back to you and let you know how this turned out with the frozen everything and also for cooking it on four hours instead of six and my different little changes and everything. So there we go. I will see you guys later.